the, the feeling at liftoff, what is it like just being in that chair strapped in? Oh, that is the hard one. That is the really hard one to describe. Right, so, so you know, that moment of liftoff, it's a big kick in the back. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. People say six. being strapped to a front of a, a freight train, that doesn't even come remotely close to the amount of power that you're sitting on. It's something the equivalent of several dozen 747s, all, all launching at once. So, you know, you're just screaming as, you know, by the time you even clear the pad, you're already going 130 miles an hour. And it's only going to go up from there. So our orbital velocity is about 18,000 miles an hour. So that's about twice as fast as a high-velocity bullet. <laughs> so literally faster than a speed bullet. Absolutely. Almost six miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we think a lot about with spaceflight is how can exercise be preventative and how can it be something that can help us survive and thrive in these reduced gravity environments. What is the optimal exercise prescription for space? It'll include some combination of resistance exercise, some element of high intensity exercise, but the exact prescription and what we need when the other 20 some odd hours of the day we have no loading at all is still an open question and one that we need to continue to work on. So we have a problem, we have a fundamental problem here. As we move away from this planet and we move into, into low gravity, reduced gravity environments, what we're going to see is that we're going to have degradation of cardiovascular function, degradation of muscle, we're going to have loss of bone, and a whole host of other problems. Cardiovascular degradation happens in a matter of hours. Wow. Loss of bone and muscle, ha uh, loss of bone happens in a matter of months. Loss of muscle happens over a course of weeks. How is the average person on this, off the street going to deal with these problems? Well, the same way we do it on the ground. We do it by loading, and the best way to do that is exercise. So the fundamental answer to how we're going to remain safe and we're going to not just survive, but we're going to thrive when we're away from this planet is the same thing that we need on the ground every day here, and that is exercise. Hmm. Everything that the American College of Sports Medicine supports here for the health of our nation and the health of the world will be essential for us to remain healthy, to survive, and thrive off of this planet.